Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have a hot plate to repair here. Bozan 918B. This is from Handy Andy, who owns the local phone repair shop. And he says he's had this for years. He uses it obviously a lot when he's replacing screens on mobile phones. And he says, be careful because when you plug it in, it trips the mains out. But he also went to say is it doesn't blow the fuse, but the fuse is effectively loose. Now, if something's tripping the mains and not blowing the fuse, first of all, we should check what rating fuse is actually in here. It says it's a six amp. I mean, it's possible that the mains is tripping out first, but it's also possible that what he has here is a short from mains to ground. So that will usually just trip the mains out, but not blow the fuse. He did mention to say that it made a funny smell before it stopped working, which makes me think maybe the heating element has failed. So let's have a quick look inside it. Let's just make a few measurements first, and then let's see if we can determine why it's tripping out the mains. The quickest and easiest way to check would be to go to continuity mode first. And let's just measure across the mains and from live and neutral to ground. So there's no short there. I'll go to resistance range actually, see if there's any resistance. So this is across the live and neutral. There's nothing there. That's reading 10 meg to ground. That's really quite high. And this one is reading open. Okay. In fact, the 10 mega is not reading at all. Now, just go the other way. No. Okay, so I don't really see anything. Let's have a look inside. Well. A little switch mode power supply and something's gone bang. Uh, there. Something's really gone bang. Let's have a look. Okay. Looks like a relay. Yeah, it just says DC 12 volts on. Looks like the contacts have burnt out on this relay to me. It's a very strange failure mode, really. That's not common. This is all horrible black stuff. It's all over my fingers now. Oh. Okay. We can see what we have then. So this is the relay. It's all burnt up. We have a power supply, <laughs> which is kind of like, I don't know, it's on like a, well, there's a bolt that goes through here. Okay, this is how the power supply is mounted. And that goes like a metal plate there, which is bolted down. We have like a big or two rather rubbery pads wrapped around with a tie wrap. And that's what's holding the power supply in place, okay? And we have a control board here for the temperature. Now, one thing you should know there, you probably do know actually, but I'll mention it, is that this power supply is not powering the heating element. A good reason for that is because we know this is a 450 watt, so it says. So there's no way on this earth, really, that that can supply 450 watts. Unless it's made by a Chinese power amplifier or speaker manufacturer, yeah, Chinese active speaker manufacturer, then that could quite easily power 450 watts. We've seen it several times, yeah. <laughs> so the power for the heating element actually comes directly from the mains. If we look at this, we have ground, we have live or neutral going to the switch. We have the other live or neutral, whichever, you'd assume live, but who knows going to the switch those two are the power coming in these two blue wires then coming out we can see we have three wires so going from the switch to the power supply are these two the red and blue that is the power into here the low voltage out of the power supply is here which goes into this plug on those two the other power 
on the red wire comes into this one and then that will go through the heating elements and we also have this black wire so this black wire oh i think yeah, okay so this black wire i think powers the heating elements this is the return from the heating element which goes to the other side of the power yeah that makes sense power coming in here live neutral or whichever and this must be a thermo couple that's measuring the temperature and that is then being monitored by this circuit and depending on the position of the control it alters the on to off duty cycle of this relay so it's not controlling the temperature heating plate at all exactly it's just controlling the duty cycle either on at full power or off and the thermal mass of this is what effectively evens out the temperature so for a certain amount of duty cycle on versus off you'll get a certain temperature on the plate more or less okay so that's what we have so the problem is obviously on here and i can think of two reasons why this might have occurred one may be that there is a short in the heating element okay and the other one may be that there was effectively high resistance in the contacts due to them being worn out and when the high current passes through the contacts that generates heat because they have resistance so we need to take this little board off have a look at it measure the resistance of the actual element see how that reads and then maybe we can figure out whether the problem is with the relay or whether the heating element okay here's the controller board if we have a look at it this is not a MOSFET this is a voltage regulator 78M05 that is a 5 volt positive voltage regulator the relay fairly clearly actually says it's 12 volts we can see there so it's a 12 volt coil on the relay so these two pins these are the power coming from the little switch mode power supply this must be a 12 volt power supply which powers the relay coil via the transistor probably that one i wouldn't be surprised and then the 12 volt has dropped down to 5 volts by this chip and that powers some of this circuitry we have here a lm758 this is a dual op amp we have this connection coming from the thermocouple we have a trimmer pot and a potentiometer here okay so i think i can figure out how this basically works the thermocouple actually generates a voltage when it warms up thermocouples do that that's why you can attach one to your multimeter for example and read the temperature it's generating a voltage it's a very small voltage so i'm fairly confident that one of the op amps in here is amplifying that voltage okay and the other one is acting as a comparator so the amplified thermocouple voltage will come into the other op amp on either inverting or non-inverting input and the other input will come from here and this is a voltage divider between ground and five volts i would say so you'll set this potentiometer that puts an input into the op amp and the op amp must therefore switch on the relay probably via that transistor just a guess and then as the thing warms up the voltage away from the thermocouple will increase i think they increase with uh, temperature but it changes yeah <laughs> and when the voltage coming from the thermocouple amplified matches the voltage set on here the relay switches off and the hot plate cools down a little bit and then the voltage from the thermocouple goes down so the op amp switches it back on and so on so therefore by setting the voltage with this you can set the point at which this switches the relay on and off and that's how i think it works oh, simple thing notice i haven't reverse engineered this that's just a gut feeling but i think it's a pretty good one so obviously this is all burnt up now that's happened for one of two reasons either the contacts in here became charred or corroded just due to use over a long time and when the contacts become corroded or blackened they increase in resistance now 
the relay, the contacts, you can see here, this is mains coming in and that is effectively going out to the heated element, then from the heated element back to the main. So for example, if this is live, this is switched live to the heating element and then from the heating element goes back to neutral. Okay, looks like that and that are the contacts in the relay. This is probably a changeover relay, but this contact isn't used. They just use it simply as an on off. Okay, you can see that. So the current that flows into the heating element flows to the contacts of the relay, obviously. And the voltage drop by the contact should be basically zero because the resistance should be basically zero. But if this, for example, goes up to say one ohm, yeah, from zero to one because it's a bit charred, the current, well, if it's 450 watt, 220 volt mains, is about two amps, okay? So you have about two amps flowing through it and you can work out from ohms or the voltage that's dropped across the contact if it was reading say one ohm okay basically v equals i times r r is now one i is two so it's about two volts dropped across here okay according to ohms law. now what each dissipated in the resistive contact is voltage times current we know there's about two volts across here and two volts times two amps is about four watts. So four watts is enough to get this thing warming up. Yeah, that's enough to get this thing warming up. If you get a bit more resistance in here, a couple of ohms, then you end up with eight watts and so on. Yeah, so that's why these things burn up when you have a bad contact in the relay. And that's one good possibility of what's happened to this. The other one is that the heating element went short. But you would think that if the heating element is short, it's not going to do this to the relay. It will just effectively just boil the fuse, yeah? But if the heating element in some way is failing, so it's starting to draw more current, I can't quite imagine it, but if it is, then obviously more current flowing through it will generate more heat for the same amount of resistance in the contact. Let's measure the resistance of the heating element. So let's measure the sensor as well. Let's just see what they read. Well, we can see the heating element. One end of it connects here, this black wire. Okay, we can probably just poke into the connector actually. There, and then the other end of the heating element comes to here. And I'm reading about 1.6K. That's a lot for heating element. That's high. That's like too high uh, for heating elements. I'm sure though it is a heating element because it's connected across the mains. This one must be the thermocouple. What's this read? I think these read almost short. You know, I can check with one of my thermocouples. I've never actually done this, but I'm fairly sure the thermocouple will have a particularly low resistance. Let's have like. Yeah, about two ohms. Let me just measure one of my thermocouples. Here we go, this is off my temperature meter. Thermocouple, going read low. Let's have a look. More actually, it reads more than two ohms, but that I guess will depend on the thermocouple to some extent. Mine's a little bit burnt up actually. Okay. So we seem to have at least two problems here. Maybe three, this connector's burnt up. I could just remove this connector and solder the wires onto here if I don't have another one. The relay obviously needs replacing. This might clean up, let's have a quick look. Yes, that's come quite clean. We can definitely see now that this transistor does in fact drive the relay. There you can see it. You can check that transistor, but I mean, it's not something we couldn't replace, to be quite honest. One end of it, you can quite clearly see, just goes to ground, which is here. That's the emitter or the source. This is the drain or the collector, depending if it's MOSFET or bipolar. That goes to the relay coil and the other end of the relay coil. I think there we can see it goes to the 12 volts coming in, so that's exactly how I thought it would be. This diode is across the relay coil effectively to limit the back EMF when the relay switches off. That's a standard thing. 
we'll just go to diode mode so this will be the base or the gate let's have a look I'm expecting this to be an NPN diode junction diode junction that that means like a bipolar transistor and it reads okay so I'm fairly confident that means the controller chip the op amps also okay this yeah it's going to read a fairly low resistance both ways because remember this is connected across the coil of the relay yeah so that's why it's going to read that both ways doesn't mean it's a faulty diode I'm just seeing the resistance of the coil I'd have to remove the relay or the diode to test but I'm confident enough that's okay so let's get this relay off the board and the second thing is let's see if the heating element's okay the easiest way to check that is just to connect the heating element directly across the mains and see if the thing warms up yeah because this could be conductive I've actually just released the pin which is this one so this is one end of the heating element the other end is there so if I connect the mains across here and here that will tell us if the heating element's any good if it's good it'll warm up if it isn't it won't yeah we can also connect it uh, via the light bulb as well to see if it's drawing any current because it's reading a high resistance I'm not even sure it is gonna do okay let's have a look I made one of these so you can see what it is just an IEC socket inline socket with a couple of crocodile clips attached to the live and neutral no earth some people will say this is extremely dangerous some people will say it's perfectly fine I think actually this is no more dangerous than this is okay and as long as you know what you're doing and you take some sensible precautions it's okay yeah comments below so we'll attach one end to the switch there which is one end of the heating element I don't know which end because I'm in the EU and the other end of the plug is like that it's not polarized so it could be either okay I'll attach this end to here okay we'll plug a lead in and we'll connect the light bulb I'll put it so you can see it and let's see if this draws any current okay so you can see the light bulb over there yeah you can see it let's switch this on and let's hope it doesn't trip all the power out okay well it's drawing current okay it's drawing current you wouldn't expect it to get particularly warm at the moment because it's just running via the light bulb but the fact it's drawing current tells me that that resistance I'm reading on it is nothing particularly sensible yeah and I think the heating element is fine one way to prove that let's put my thermocouple on the top of the heating element we'll switch it on without the light bulb and let's see if it warms up okay there's my temperature meter I'll just put it back on again for a minute with the light bulb it's definitely drawing some current because the light bulb's sort of dim-ish okay let's go directly to mains let's see then if this warms up or if I suddenly disappear because I've tripped all the power out okay but it's warmed up it's warming up it's warming up okay we don't need to warm it any more than that we know the heating element is good so we prove that let's have a quick look at this circuit board now let's remove this relay I'm going to add a bit of fresh solder to this okay go let's see if we can desolder this yeah looks good
Okay. Hopefully that'll just fall out. Let's see. Yeah. Out it comes. Nice and clean. What's that? This bit of solder there? Yeah. No problem. We can clean this up here now. As I say, I may end up just removing this connector and soldering the wires on because I don't think I have any, but I can see if I can get one. You never know. And we need the relay, okay? That's the culprit. So, Handy Andy will be going to the capital, Las Palmas, on Friday. We have two electronics component shops in the capital, which is a bit strange, really, because I mean, like, we have a population on the island of 865,000. Okay, we're a little island, Grand Canaria. And yet we have better electronic shops than they have in like big countries from what I hear. Hear people saying in the States they can't find the electronics component shop. So somebody can tell me what's going on there. If our little uh, economy can support two of them. Uh, go work that one out. Comments below. So we'll see what we can get. I'll give this to Andy. I'll ask if he can get one of those connectors. I'll take the... Pull off the other end, ask him if he can get one of those for me. And if he can't, then, as I say, we'll just solder the wires. This will clean up quite easily, I think. Yeah, that came clean enough, happy enough with that. The little power supply. I could just power this up and test it, but I'm quite confident it's working, actually. The fault was nowhere near the wiring from that so i can't see how that would have a problem but i can give it a quick test just to be certain if it turns out that it is faulty well i can just take something like this out of a wall wart i think people sometimes call them a power pack yeah I just strap it in here like there's not a shortage of space inside this thing to attach a 12 volt power supply so i'm not even worried about that at all to be quite honest and there we have it so Culprit was the relay. We even proved in theory why that would have happened. So we know what caused it to happen. The heating element is good. We know that. Power supply is nothing to worry about. We know that. All the rest of the circuitry should be absolutely fine. And even if it isn't, well, I've got the op amps, I've got the regulators, I've got the MOSFET. What we can just show. To prove the point I was making, that now I've removed the relay, we can measure this diode. Okay. There you go. Diode junction. Nothing the other way. That's a very good example of why when you are testing semiconductor junctions in circuit and diode modes, you need to consider the components that are connected around that. So knowing, for example, that you always have a reverse bias diode across an inductor is something very useful. Yeah, if you didn't have that knowledge, then you may well think, oh, faulty diode. Okay, so useful. Remember that one, guys, if it was new to you. Okay. Enough learned then, I think, with this. I'm happy with the video, hope you are too, and I look forward to seeing you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.